Hello dear student, welcome to another lecture in Dynamics of Rigid Bodies. This is my third lecture in Dynamics of Rigid Bodies. So far we have learned about moment of inertia, theorems of moment of inertia and also looked into moment of inertia of some of the rigid bodies such as rectangular lamina, a disc, etc. In this video, we will learn about the moment of inertia of an annular disc, a solid sphere and a solid cylinder. An annular disc. Annular disc is a disc which is not complete, which is hollow from inside. Consider an annular disc of a density mass density rho. Let it have an outer radius r1 and an inner radius r2. If rho is the mass density of the annular disc, then we can write the mass is equal to the mass density into the area. Here the area is just only this portion which is shaded. It is hollow from inside. Therefore, the area can be the area of a larger circle minus the area of a smaller circle. The, a uh, the larger circle has a radius r1. Therefore, the area of the larger circle will be pi r1 square while the area of the smaller circle will be pi r2 square. Here, in this case, we have to uh, subtract the area of the smaller circle from the area of the larger circle. Therefore, we will write the mass is equal to pi r1 square minus r2 square. That is, pi r1 square is the area of the larger circle minus pi r2 square the area of the smaller circle. From this, we can find the mass density rho from just rearranging, just bringing this portion pi of r1 square minus r2 square here and we can write m is equal to, uh, sorry, rho uh, is equal to m divided by pi r1 squared minus pi r2 squared. Now consider a very small area inside this annular disk at a distance x and having a thickness dx. Then we can find the mass of the small shaded portion as the mass density into area of that portion. The mass density is rho while the area of that portion can be calculated as the circumference of the circle multiplied by its thickness. The circumference of the circle at the, uh, having a radius x is 2 pi x and uh, the thickness is dx. Therefore, the area of the shaded portion is 2 pi x dx. When this area is multiplied by the mass density rho, we will get the mass of this small shaded annular disk. Let's find the moment of inertia of the annular disk about its center of mass, about an axis passing through its center of mass and perpendicular to the plane of the annular disk. To find the moment of inertia about the center of mass, we can just integrate the moment of inertia of this small ring around uh, the annular disk, this small ring at the distance x and having a thickness dx and integrate it from r1 that is the outer radius to r2 that is the inner radius. Now what is the moment of inertia of this small shaded portion about the, um, uh, about the axis? We can find the moment of inertia of this small shaded portion di as we know that the moment of inertia of a small ring we have calculated it as 
m into r squared. Here, the mass of this small shaded portion, we have calculated it as rho into, that is a mass density, into the circumference, that is 2 pi x square dx into the r square. Here the r is again x. Therefore, the r square can be substituted by x square. So, this will become 2 pi rho into x cube dx. This is a small moment of inertia. That is moment of inertia of only the shaded portion. Therefore, the complete moment of inertia i will be the integral of this. That is I will be the integral of this function for function 2 pi into rho into x cube dx from where to where this is not a complete circle so we can't find it from 0 to r2 the shaded portion is only from r2 to r1 therefore the upper limit here is r2 why the lower limit here, sorry, the upper limit here is R1, that is the larger circle, and the lower limit is R2. Therefore, we can find the moment of inertia I is equal to integral from R1 to R2, 2 pi rho to rho pi x cube dx. Let's integrate this. On integrating, here we have 2 pi and rho as constants. Therefore, this will come out as 2 pi and rho. And what do we have here? Integral x cube dx from R2, the smaller circle, to R1, the larger circle. Now, what is x cube dx? Integral x cube dx is x to the power 4 by 4. So, what we have here is 2 pi rho into x to the power 4 by 4 from R2 to R1. Therefore, what uh, uh, we can just cut off this 2 and we can write here 2. Therefore, 1 by 2 will come out. So, our answer is rho into pi by 2. Here we have rho into pi by 2. And what is left is x to the power 4 from the limit r2 to r1. Therefore, what we can write x to the power 4 from r2 to r1. x to the power 4 in, by the higher limit is r1 to the power 4 minus the lower limit r2 to the power 4. Therefore, we have here i is equal to rho pi by 2 into r1 to the power 4. r1 is a higher limit minus r2 to the power 4 where r2 is the lower limit. So, let's try to rearrange it. I will, uh, will avoid the portion of rho here and take only pi by 2 r1 to the power 4 minus r2 to the power 4 here multiplied by rho. We already have an equation for rho. What was rho? Rho is the mass density. Mass density is mass by area. Now, what is the mass here? Mass of the total ring, we have already calculated it. And the area is pi into r1 square minus r2 square. We have already calculated it. So, we have rho is equal to this. So, I have substituted for rho also as m divided by pi into r1 square minus r2 square. Now, just look over here. It is in the form of a square minus b square. Isn't it? When I take a is equal to r1 square and b is equal to r2 square 
This is of the format of a1 square, a square minus b square. From mathematics, we can write a square minus b square is equal to a plus b into a minus b. So how can we rewrite it? Here a is r1 square. Therefore, it will be r1 square plus r2 square into r1 square minus r2 square. So let's substitute r1 to the power 4 minus r2 to the power 4 by r1 square plus r2 square into r1 square minus r2 square. What will we get? We get i is equal to pi by 2 into instead of this we are going to substitute r1 square plus r2 square into r1 square minus r2 square. Now what we have left here is into mass divided by pi into r1 square minus r2 squared. Now let's see, we have an r1 square minus r2 square in the numerator and r1 square minus r2 square in the denominator. So why can't we cancel it? So let's cancel these two functions, r1 square minus r2 square which is in the numerator and r1 square minus r2 square which is in the denominator. So my final answer will be pi i is equal to m into here I can write i is equal to I already have an m here m into I can also cancel out this pi pi is also there in the numerator and denominator. So I have m I have a 2 over here and what is remaining is r1 square plus r2 square. So this is my moment of inertia of a complete annular disk about an axis passing through its center and perpendicular to its plane. I is equal to m into r1 square plus r2 square by 2. Then let's find the moment of inertia of the annular disk about its diameter. We have already seen such a case when we studied disk. We have found the uh, moment of inertia of the disk about its diameter using the perpendicular axis theorem. We shall use the same over here. So let's consider another uh, uh, diameter which is perpendicular to the existing diameter. According to the perpendicular axis theorem, the moment of inertia of the center of mass, that is what we have found right now, will be equal to the sum of moment of inertia about the first axis, that is this axis and the another axis. Hope you remember the moment of inertia. Hope you remember the equation as the equation tells us, according to perpendicular axis theorem, the moment of inertia about the z axis will be equal to moment of inertia about the x axis plus moment of inertia about the y axis. Here, the ix and iy are same because about the diameter, the mass division is same. Therefore, I can just write ix and iy equal to id. Therefore, what I have here is id plus id that is 2id. And I have already calculated I is it. I is it is my I about the center of mass which I have calculated just now. So to find the moment of inertia about the diameter ID, I just need to divide what I have found right now by 2. Therefore, my answer will be ID is equal to M into R1 square plus R2 square divided by 4. 
In the earlier case, we had divided by 2. So we have divided it again by 1 by 2. So what we have here is m into r1 square plus r2 square divided by 4. Now, consider a solid sphere. Let's study the moment of inertia of a solid sphere. Consider a solid sphere of radius r and mass density rho. If rho is a mass density and m is a complete mass, then we can write rho, that is we have rho is mass density. Mass density is again mass divided by volume. Here this is a three-dimensional figure, so we have to consider volume. In the earlier case, it was a two-dimensional figure, so we considered only the area. So, here the rho is mass, mass of the uh, sphere that is m divided by its volume. Volume of a sphere having a radius r is uh, given by 4 by 3 pi r cube. Therefore, the mass density rho is m divided by 4 by 3 pi r cube. Consider a small disk which cuts the existing solid sphere which is at a distance x from the center and having a small thickness dx. Now the radius of that disk of that circle y can be calculated using the Pythagoras theorem. Here we have a 90 degree, a 90 degree angle over here. So using Pythagoras theorem, what we have is r square, the hypotenuse square is equal to y square plus x square. Therefore, y square will be equal to r square minus x square. Therefore, y can be written as root over r square minus x square. Here, y is the radius of that disk. This is a circular disk. So, it has a radius y is equal to root over r, r square minus x square. If a y is the radius of that circle, then we can write mass of that small circle, mass of that area dm is equal to rho into, that is mass density into area of that circle. Here, this is the area of that circle. What is the area? Area here is pi into y square into the small thickness dx. Here we are considering area into dx, the thickness. Pi into y square. We already have y square is equal to r square minus x square into the small thickness dx. Therefore, the mass of this circular disk is uh, the mass density into the small volume of that disk and that is pi y square into dx. Instead of y square, we have substituted r square minus x square. Now let's find the moment of inertia of the solid sphere about the center of mass. As in the earlier cases, we know that a number of disks stacked together will give us the solid sphere. And the uh, thing which varies in this disk is the radius. A number of disks with varying radius stacked together will give us a solid sphere. So what we can do is we can find the moment of inertia of a single disk about the axis and integrate it from minus r to plus r. Let's see how to do it. So let's consider a disk rotating about its about an axis passing through its center of mass and perpendicular to its plane and it has a radius y. We already know, we have already calculated the moment of inertia i of a disk 
about its center of mass we have already calculated in our previous video that it is half into m r square where m is the mass of the disk and r is its radius here m is a small m of that disk we have already calculated it as rho into pi r square minus x square dx we have already calculated the mass and the radius the radius here is y and we have calculated y is equal to r square minus x square in our previous step so how can we write this now let's uh, consider a solid sphere so a number of disks stacked together uh, having different radius will give us the solid sphere so let's integrate this small moment of inertia about the whole sphere and we will get the moment of inertia of the whole sphere now what how can we calculate this we have an r square minus x square over here and also we have an r square minus x square over here so we can write it as 1 by 2 into r square minus x square the whole square dx so let's try to integrate this what we have to integrate is we have to integrate uh, sorry we have to find i i is equal to integral minus r to r because we what we have here is a sphere so this is the point o and we have a our disk over here this is the area occupied by our disk so we have to integrate this disk from this disk is at the distance x this disk is at the distance x from the center We have already seen that this disk is at the distance x from the center. So we have to vary this x from since this is the radius. This will be r and this will be r. This distance from the center. This distance will be r and this distance will be r. So what we need to do is we need to vary this variable x from this point to this point. So we integrate it from minus r let's take this as a negative point since this is the central point zero this is minus r to r so let's integrate what we need to integrate is integral minus r to r Uh, rho pi square into r square minus x square the whole square dx so we have is 1 by 2 into rho pi square r square minus x square the whole square into dx so we have it from minus r to r so since it's a, a symmetrical body we can write it from 2 times 0 to r so it will be 2 times the integral 0 to r 1 by 2 into rho pi squared r square minus x square the whole square dx let's take all the constants out we have a 2 here we have a 2 here we can cancel out these both and what we have here out is just pi r square integral over 0 to r now let's open is using the binomial theorem what we have here is a square minus sorry a minus b the whole square 
What is a minus b the whole square? a square minus 2ab plus b square. So a square, a square, here a is r square. Therefore, a square will be r to the power 4. a square minus 2 times ab. Here a is r square and b is x square. 2ab minus b square. Here b is x to the power 2. Therefore, b square will be x to the power 4 into dx. Let's try to integrate this. The constants out rho pi into r to the power 4 dx. Integral 0 to uh, r. Integral 0 to r r to the power 4 dx. This is what we have here. Minus integral 0 to r 2 into r square x square minus integral 0 to r x to the power 4 dx. Sorry, we have a dx over here also. And this is what we are going to integrate. Constants out, rho pi. What is r to the power 4 dx? r to the power 4 is a constant. So what we have here is just x. So r to the power 4 is a constant. It will come out. Integral dx. What is integral dx? Is just x. So integral dx is x from 0 to r plus here the constants in the second term r sorry this is not plus what we have here is minus the constants are 2 r squared now the uh, variable is x square dx integral x square dx is x to the power 3 by 3 from 0 to r plus x to the power 4 dx. What will be its integral? x to the power 5 by 5 from 0 to r. So let's try to calculate this. On calculating what we will get is rho into pi x to its upper limit is r minus lower limit 0 so what we here get is only r so x will be r uh, and what we have here is r to the power 4 and our answer in the first step will be r to the power 5 minus we already have 2r square, let's take this out 2 by 3, r square we have x cube, x cube to its higher limit will be r, so it will be r cube minus lower limit 0. Therefore, r to the power r square into r cube will give you r to the power 5. Plus, we already have a 1 by 5 here x to the higher limit r so it's r to the power 5 minus 0 so what we have here is r to the power 5 by 5 we have everything in r to the power 5 so let's calculate this let's take r to the power 5 as common and let's try to calculate 1 minus 2 by 3 plus 1 by 5. Taking 15 as a common denominator uh, to the power 5, what we will get is 15 minus 10 plus 3. Right? And our answer will be 8 by 15. 
So let's try to rearrange this. We want to write it in terms of mass and the distance. We already know that the mass of a sphere uh, is related uh, to mass as density into volume. Volume of a sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So let's try to take an r out and what we will get is rho is here. Let's try to take 4 by 3 pi r cube from here itself. So what we are left with is we have taken r cube. So what is remaining is r square. We have taken r cube from r to the power 5. So what is remaining is r square. We have taken 4 by 3. After taking 4 from the numerator what is remaining is 2. And after taking 3 from the denominator, what is remaining is just 5. So, our, this will be a rho, that is mass density into volume will be mass m into r square into 2 by 5. And this m into r square into 2 by 5 that is 2 by 5 m r square is the moment of inertia of a solid sphere. What have we done? We have just calculated the moment of inertia of a disc about the same axis and just integrated that moment of inertia from minus r to r and all others are the mathematical steps. Hope we are clear with this. Let's move on. Now, let's find the moment of inertia of a solid sphere about its tangent. Now, the solid sphere's tangent will be definitely at a distance r from its center where r is the radius of the solid sphere. Therefore, in this case, let's consider this and we can calculate the moment of inertia about this axis by using the parallel axis theorem. What does the parallel axis tells us? If we need to find the moment of inertia about its tangent and if we know the moment of inertia about the center of mass which we already know as 2 by 5 mr square that is the moment of inertia of the center of mass which we have already calculated and this is at a distance r. Now, using the parallel axis theorem, what we have is the moment of inertia of this tangent axis. Let's call it P. The moment of inertia about the tangent axis will be equal to the moment of inertia of the center of mass plus mass into distance square. Here distance is R only therefore r square. So what we have here is moment of inertia about the tangent is equal to ICM plus m r square. We already know that the ICM here is equal to 2 by 5 m r square. So just want to add it with another m r square. What will we get? Let's take m r square as common and 2 by 5 plus 1. What will we get? 5, taking 5 as a common denominator, it will be 5 plus 2, that is 7 by 5 m r square. Therefore, moment of inertia about the tangent of a solid sphere is 7 by 5 m r square. Now, let's find the moment of inertia of a solid cylinder. Consider a solid cylinder of radius r and length l. Let it be rotating about its 
own axis. Its own axis is the axis which is passing through its length and passing through its center of mass. This is the own axis of a cylinder. To find the moment of inertia of the cylinder, we can again consider a small disk of mass m and integrate its mass about the limits. This is the way we do to find. We already know the moment of inertia of a disk. The moment of inertia of a disk is just 1 by 2 m r square. We have already calculated it in our uh, previous video as moment of inertia of a disk. Now the disk is rotating about its center of mass, isn't it? This is the axis and this axis pass through here. So this disk is rotating about its center of mass. So the moment of inertia of a disk which is rotating about its center of mass is given by half into m r square which we have already calculated where r is the radius of the disk. Here the radius of the disk is same as the radius of the cylinder that is equal to r. Therefore, this m will be mass of the disk. Here the mass of the disk is small m. Therefore, it will be small m r square. And the moment of inertia of this entire uh, uh, solid cylinder will be the sum of all the moment of inertia of the disk we can consider. So, let's try finding this. I can be uh, in, is equal to the sum of all such disks which we can find over the area of the uh, solid uh, cylinder. Therefore, we can just sum the same into um, uh, m r square by 2. Here r square and 2 are constants. Therefore, what we have here is summation over m into r square by 2. So, let's see. Summation over m, that is the moment uh, sum of all the disk which is placed over the entire area of the solid sphere. Summation over m, that is the mass of the whole disk will be equal to the mass of the solid cylinder itself. So, we can replace summation uh, small m by capital M where capital M is the mass of the entire cylinder. So, I here will be m r square by 2. So, the I of a cylinder, the moment of inertia of a cylinder about its own axis is m r square by 2. Now let's find the moment of inertia about another axis which is not the axis of the cylinder but another axis which is perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder and it is passing through the center of mass. So since this is a solid cylinder, this particular axis P dash is cutting into the cylinder and it's passing into the cylinder through the cylinder about its center of mass and this is perpendicular to the radius, uh, to the axis of the uh, cylinder, axis of the cylinder which is green and we are going to find the moment of inertia about this red axis. For that, we can use the parallel axis theorem. Let's find another, uh, let's consider another uh, real axis which is parallel to the first axis P and this axis now passes through the disk which we have already considered. So, this is another axis P dash. Now, 
we can find the moment of inertia of this disk of small mass m about this axis p dash. In this case, the axis here passes through uh, the diameter, passes through the diameter of the disk. And we already know that the di uh, moment of inertia of a disk when it is rotated about an axis which is passing through its diameter. So we can just find that and integrate it over the limits. So moment of inertia of that disk of small disk about the diameter is given by moment of inertia of disk about diameter uh, is given by we have calculated it using the perpendicular axis theorem hope you remember it so it will be half of the moment of inertia about the center of mass of a disk so what was the moment of inertia about the center of mass it was mr square by 2 so what we have here is m r square by 4 so 1 by 4 into m m will be rho into rho is a mass density and pi pi uh, r square is the area into dx is the small thickness therefore rho mass density into the volume volume is area into dx this is the mass and r square so the moment of inertia of the small disk about p dash is 1 by 4 m r square here m is rho pi r square dx into r square so to find the entire moment of inertia we need to integrate it now we have already found the moment of inertia about p dash what we need is a moment of inertia about p so this p dash and p are at a distance x since we have considered a disk at a distance x from the center o these two axes are parallel to each other and is at a distance x therefore the moment of inertia about p can be calculated as moment of inertia about p dash plus m into the distance x square here m is a mass of the small disk and we have calculated it as rho into pi r square dx over here we have already calculated the mass as rho pi r square dx and into x square therefore the moment of inertia about this axis p using the parallel axis theorem is moment of inertia about p dash which we have already calculated here just carry over the same we have just uh, combined r square and r square to, r to the power 4 so this is the moment of inertia about p dash plus mass into the distance square here mass is given by rho pi r square dx which we have already calculated mass into distance square. So to find the entire moment of inertia about p we just need to integrate it from minus l by 2 to l by 2. We have considered the point the central point here is the center O. So the center will be 0. Since the total length is L, we can divide it into L by 2 and minus L by 2. Therefore, we are going to integrate the small disk from minus L by 2 to L by 2. Now, moment of inertia of the small disk as we have already calculated is pi r uh, rho pi r to the power 4 by 4 into dx plus rho pi r square x square dx from 
minus L by 2 to L by 2 will give you the moment of inertia of this entire uh, solid cylinder about the axis P. Now, how can we calculate this? Since this is a regular body, we can write it as 2 into 0 to L by 2. The same that is rho pi r to the power 4 by 4 dx plus rho pi r square x square dx. So let's split it. 2 into integral. Uh, so the first term here we have the constants rho pi r to the power 4 by 4. All are constants. What we have here is just 0 to L by 2 dx. Plus in the second term our constants are rho pi r square and the variable is x square dx from 0 to L by 2. Therefore, on calculating this 2 is common for both. So, what we can find is 2 into rho pi r to the power 4 by 4. Integral dx is x and integrating it from 0 to L by 2. 0 uh, will be a uh, lower limit. So what we need to consider is, uh, is only the upper limit and that is L by 2. So x from 0 to L by 2 will be just L by 2. We have already done this. Plus rho pi r square x cube dx. x cube dx will be a, uh, sorry, x square dx. x square dx will give you x cube by 3 from 0 to L by 2. Here is also, since 0 is the lower limit, x cube uh, will change to L by 2 the whole cube. So, so what we have here is rho pi r to the power 4 by 4 into x uh, from L by 2 to 0 will give you just L by 2. Plus the another term rho pi r square divided by 3 into L by 2 the whole cube. So this term, this term is these all are constants and what we have here is 1 by 3 into L by 2 the whole cube. L by 2 the whole cube is L cube divided by 2 cube that is 8. So this term is L cube by 8 into 3 that is 24. We already have a 2 here. So we can just cut this 2 and we can just divide it and write it as 12. So what we have here is... Uh, this portion that is pi r square all these uh, terms calculated and put over here. Let's rearrange it. Let's take all those constants that is pi r uh, l and rho outside. So the constants here is r square. I can pull out r square and also I can pull out l and write pi r square l into rho into r square by 4 plus l square by 12. And this is a moment of inertia of a solid cylinder about the axis which is perpendicular to its own axis and passing through its center of mass. Hope you are clear with the derivation. So dear student, we are about to end our chapter. We have learned about the moment of inertia, theorems of moment of inertia and by this we have learned the moment of inertia of six types of rigid bodies. So we will find, uh, uh, we will try to find and explain what is the kinetic energy of a rotating body in our next lecture. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.